We talk about how routing is done on the internet using a term called store and forward. Routers on the internet do store and forward routing, and the internet is sometimes referred to as a store and forward computer network. So what does that mean? Store and forward describes what routers do over and over again as packets arrive that they need to make decisions about. So imagine I have a router, I have three links that are coming into this router, one, two, and three. When a packet arrives on any one of these links, the router needs to make a decision about which of the other links to send it out on. So if it arrives at link from link one, I need to send it either on link two or link three. Same thing, if it arrives on link two, I need to send it out either on link one or link three. So the way routers do this is the first step is store. So routers maintain a queue in memory or some sort of storage of all the packets that have arrived. So let's say a packet arrives on link one. The first thing the router does is it sticks that packet into its queue. And let's say the destination is foo. And then let's say another packet arrives on link two. So I'm gonna stick this in my queue and let's say the destination is bar. So at the same time, routers, so packets come in, they get stored. Routers are also simultaneously trying to forward these packets out as fast as they can. So the router would look up in its routing table and it would say, destination foo, which link does it go out on? It arrived from link one, so hopefully it goes out on link either link two or link three. And when it makes that decision, let's say this is my uh, packet that was destined for foo, the router will send it out over link three. Same thing with this packet that came in on link two. This was destined for bar. Has to go out on link one and link three. Let's say that also goes out on link three. And so this is what routers do over and over and over again. Now, why is it important to store the packets before I forward them? Couldn't I just forward them immediately? That would be a different approach. But the idea of using a queue is important because it allows the router to accommodate a couple of different things that are characteristic of internet routing. First of all, it's possible that a burst of packets arrives either on one link or on multiple links faster than the router can make decisions about how to route them. So rather than just dropping them, uh, the router stores them temporarily, and then there's this separate part of the router that's trying to push them out as fast as possible. So as long as this queue doesn't fill up, the router doesn't drop any packets. So even if a burst of packets arrives from all the links all at once, as long as the router can store them temporarily, it can catch up in a minute once that burst dies down. Now obviously if packets continuously arrive at the router faster than the router can actually make decisions about how to route them, this queue is going to full, fill and at some point the router won't have any more space to store incoming packets and will have to start dropping them. Life's hard, packets get dropped. So. And that's you know how routers work. Sometimes they have to drop packets if this queue fills up, but if the queue is big enough and if the router is making enough progress at routing packets, the queue doesn't fill up and all the packets are sent on their way. The second thing that this queue allows me to do, or allows the router to do, is to accommodate differences in capacity between these links. So let's say that link one is a much faster, higher bandwidth link than link Two. So packets can arrive at link one much faster than the router can send them out on link two. Now again, if packets arrive continuously at link one that need to be sent out over link two, what's going to happen is this queue is going to fill up and the router will have to start dropping packets. But as long as the average rate at which packets arrive from link one that need to be sent over link two is less than link two link capacity, the router can, link two can keep up. So this queue allows the router to buffer packets temporarily and send them out over link two. So again, let's say that 10 packets arrive at link one all at once and they need to be sent off uh, over link two. Even if link two is much slower, as long as those 10 packets can be sent over link two before a bunch of other packets arrive from link one or from link three that need to go out on link two, um, we're fine. So this um, queue allows the buffer to, allows the router to kind of smooth out fluctuations in traffic, um, bursty traffic, that might arrive at each one of these links. And that's important because traffic patterns on the internet tend to be fairly bursty. So for example, you go to a web page, 
suddenly your browser is requesting all of this content in the form of lots of different packets as fast as possible. And so a burst of traffic might arrive at this router, and this queue allows the router both to accommodate those bursts, um, regardless of where they come from, and to deal with different uh, capacities on the links that are feeding in and out of it. Now, if this queue fills up, for whatever reason, either because traffic is arriving too fast at this router, then the router will have to start dropping packets. Remember, the IP layer is best effort. Routers are allowed to drop packets. And if they drop packets, they really don't have to tell anyone about it. Um, and that's a good thing, right? Because think about it. When my queue fills up and when I start dropping packets, that's the last time you want the router to be doing other things other than just trying to keep up with traffic. So when the queue gets full, the router's overloaded, and it's trying to do its best. It's trying to do all this work as fast as possible, get these packets on their way. If the router had to notify everybody about packets that were dropped, that would just add more work to an already overloaded router. So this is a nice aspect of the design of the IP layer. Um, the fact that routers don't have to retry packets, they don't have to notify anybody when they're dropped, um, makes sure that when they are really, really busy, when they're heavily loaded, they can focus on their core job, which is just trying to route the packets that arrive at this router as quickly as possible over whatever link they need to go on.